not hot girl with you because I'm trying to give Esther. I'm trying to give Ruth. I'm trying to give Proverbs 31. I cannot. City girl. I'm trying to kingdom. Christian women, you need to stop saying that. You need to stop saying you're trying to give off Esther. You need to stop trying to say you're giving off Ruth. You need to stop with the Proverbs 31 woman because most American women, most westernized women cannot be or are unwilling to accept what an actual Proverbs 31 woman is. Now, let me preface this by saying this. When I got divorced in 2008, but I was still willing to date Christian women, when we would get into this type of conversation, one of the biggest turnoffs I would have on from them is when they would tell me that they're trying to be Ruth and they want me to be their Boaz. Or if they ever say that they are trying to give off Esther and I was supposed to be Xerxes one night with the cane. But then they would say they want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. This would turn them off so quickly. And there were many, many that would run away from me at that point in time. First, let's start out with the Esther and the Ruth. And then I'm going to throw a little bit of them in as I go through Proverbs 31. In the Esther part of it, most Christian women don't understand the story of Esther. Most Christian men don't understand the story of Esther. Here you have Xerxes, who already has multiple wives and has one wife who is the queen queen of all the wives. Esther, who is a Israelite woman, is with a bunch of other women going through a full one year of beauty treatments, going through a full year of, um, what's the term, etiquette training and are learning how to be a queen and are given all these secrets of and teachings of how to be that wife. And each woman only gets one night with Xerxes. You get one night to charm him. And that's going to come up later. You get one night to demonstrate how beautiful you are, rubbing all your oils and the spices on your body. You only get one night. And you know what happens in that one night? Yeah, there's a dinner. Yeah, there might be some dancing. Yeah, there'll be some conversation. But you're going to have to give up that pum pum to be with the Kang, to be with Xerxes. And here you are being with the man who this man is not a worshiper of your Jesus character. He's not a worshiper of Yahweh. He's not a worshiper of Jehovah. He's not a worshiper of El, whichever name you want to give him. He's not a worshiper of any of your God. Xerxes was a Babylonian, I mean a Persian. So Xerxes worshiped Ahura Mazda. He did not worship your God. So what about that equally yoked thing when it comes to Esther? They were not equally yoked according to how you guys like to think about it. Now the other aspect of this whole thing is that Esther is lifted up because she saved her people. So that has nothing to do with you being a wife. Nothing at all. You're just a one night with the king jump off that happened to be so, that happened to be good enough that the king said that's some good poom poom and I can talk to her. Now let's talk about Ruth for a second. In the story of Ruth, many women like to say they want to find their Boaz. Have you really delved into that story? Ruth decided she wanted to stay with Naomi. She didn't want to go back to her Moabite people, which is interesting since the Moabite people have supposedly been genocided earlier. So how are there still Moabite people by the time we get to Ruth? But she didn't want to go back to her people. She goes with Naomi. First, she's just gleaming some wheat and shit off the side of Boaz's farm in order for Naomi and her to eat. Now, because women couldn't inherit property unless they married another Israelite man, Naomi and Ruth are destitute. But Boaz, this old man who doesn't have a woman, doesn't have a wife, but he's an old dude, he spots, he spots Ruth and he said, damn, she's fine. So he started leaving her a little something, something. Started giving her a little change. Started paying them bills, paying that rent. Right? So you want that man who just want to pay your bills, pay your rent. And he an old man. So then Naomi said, ooh, what? The old rich man is taking a good eye to you? He like your, your beauty? He like your way you look, the way you bend over and glean that, that wheat? She dresses her up. She puts linen all on her. She puts the, the, the perfumes and everything and scrub her up real nice and clean and tells her to go and hide in the wine press or the wheat press and then tells her to lie at the bottom of his feet. And then they spend that 
one night together, that one night with the king together. You know they got that poom poom. So basically you want to be a gold digger. And you, when an old, older gentleman who got some money t takes notice of you, now you need to go and get with that man. Because it wasn't like, oh, Boaz is such a great man. He's so nice and we have great conversations and we have so much in common and all these things. No, he got money. He showed some interest towards me. I'm going to go lay at his feet. I'm going to give him that poom poom. And then Boaz, who knows that he's not the rightful person to take on Naomi and Ruth, tricks his elders the elders of the village into getting Ruth by saying that, yeah, you know, we got to do something about this situation. We got this widow. We got these two widows. You know, they're part of our society. We got to take care of them. Hey, you have first dibs, but I know you're older. You already got a wife and everything. You take on another wife. She's going to want some babies and all that. And the other older dude is like, man, I'm too old for this bullshit. So, you know, boy is like, you know what? I'll take her. I'll take her. Here's my left shoe. I'll take her. <sighs> That's who you want to be, the gold digger, the poor, the poor gold digger, who your best attributes to bring to this man is the fact that you submitted to him and gave up your poom poom. That's who y'all want to be. And now when it comes to a Proverbs 31 woman, Proverbs 31 is a king who's being t who's telling his son what his mother had taught him. And some of the things up there, of course, y'all like a good wife who can find she has far more precious. She's far more precious than jewel. Her heart of her husband uh, trusting her. And he will have no lack or gain. She, she does him good and not harm all the days of his life. So be peaceful. She seeks wool and flax and works with her willing hands. She works. She is like a ship of the merchants. She brings, uh, she brings her food from the altar. She now ships bring in goods. They do work. They bring in, they bring in something to the table. She rises while she rises while it is yet night she provides food for her household and tasks for her maidens so she takes care of the house she finds she considers a field and buy it with the fruits of her hands and she plants a vineyard so she creates something she buys things and she creates stuff to bring in more for the family she girds her along with strength and makes her arm strong she perceives that her merchandise is profitable she makes sure that the things that she makes that she is making something that is profitable bringing in some money y'all don't like that about a Proverbs 31 woman in the Western world. Y'all just want the man to take care of you. But this woman is doing some work. She's bringing some shit to the table. Right? She brings some stuff to the table here. Uh, her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her she puts her hands in the distaff of her hands. Um, hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor. And reaches out her hands to the... So she's a generous woman. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. So when things go bad, she doesn't get all up in arms. For all her households are clothed in scarlet. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. And purple, her husband is known in the gate. Uh, known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. So she's not an embarrassment to him. She, uh, she makes linen garments and sells them. She creates something and she makes some money. She's not just sitting at home eating bonbons. She delivers <laughs> girdles to the merchant. She is doing some work. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the same at, at the time to come she ain't somebody who's creating issues and getting all worried she opens her mouth with wisdom and she teaches and teachings of kindness is in her is on her tongue so she is a wise woman she don't be listening to your friends she looks well to the ways of her household and she does not eat the bread of idleness she ain't just sitting around eating bonbons her children raise raise up and call her blessed and her husband also and he praises her Many women have done exactly, but you surpass them all. So she's better than the other women, better than her friends. Charm and deceit and charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised, giving her fruit of her hands and let her work praise, uh, praise her in the gates. So this woman realized that charm and charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. So that means that the shit that Boaz and Ruth, I mean, that Ruth and uh, Esther did with charming the king, charming Boaz with her root, with her beauty and his, their cunningness is not something that a Proverbs 31 woman should be. And as well, a Proverbs 31 woman also brings in things, makes money, just like my grandmother used to make money, just like my great grandmother used to sell shit that she would make so that it would encompass in the household as well as take care of the house. Now, how many Western women are really Proverbs 31 women? So y'all have a great day.
And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good.